Have you guys heard anything about that spending strike that might be going on? I've seen a lot of these spending strike things come across my phone during my time of playing Top War, and usually I pay them no mind, but this one caught my eye largely because of the size of the movement, and I started looking at their play requests, and they asked for my opinion on these requests, so that's what I'm going to be going over today. First off, to give credit to the leaders of this movement, their Discord name is Death Squad, and I will be putting a link to their Discord in the description below, so if you're interested in their movement and you want to support it, make sure you go ahead and give their Discord a visit so you can find out more about this, and I'll be going over those player requests today. I will put a link to the Google document of the player requests in the description below. I specifically asked them not to make changes until after I've made this video, however, that link the information in there may change because that document is a live document and they can make edits to it so i'll be reading it out loud for this video but i'll put the link to it in the description below and then you'll also be able to see any edits that they may make to this document later in the future if they don't just make a new one altogether now i would like to say i already know i'm going to say some very unpopular things in this video but please keep in mind in part i'm going to be playing devil's advocate i'm going to try it look at things from top wars perspective they are a business they do need to make money we all could recognize within five minutes of playing that this was a pay-to-play kind of game, and we all basically agreed to it since we continue to play the game. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, I'm not saying that the pay-to-play hasn't seemed to have gotten worse lately, and I would like to see it toned back, but that is something to keep in mind. You can't just ask a business, hey, you need to stop doing this, but you're going to lose 50% of your income. It's, it's not fair, and if, if that's the case, they're just going to shut down the game. So we do have to push them a little bit to make the game more enjoyable for us, but they still have to make their money. Otherwise, it's not worth for them keeping up this game, and they're just going to move on and make a different game. Another thing I'm going to focus on is I want the gap between VIP 16 and free-to-play player to shrink or at the very least not grow. I can already see on the list of demands here, there are some that seem to come th from the perspective of a free-to-play player, but also some that maybe come from a heavy spending player that's upset they haven't gotten more for their money. So that's gonna have to be reconciled and it's something that I'll probably address dear as I go through some of these player requests. My first comment about the player requests is, of course, the list of demands does need to be shrank. Now, the leaders of the movement already recognize this needs to be done, but I did ask them not to make any changes to the list until I've had a chance to go through it and make this video on it. So that is something they're also they're already planning on doing. And as a result, there's a few of these things on this list that I may just brush off and basically say this is not important. It's not worth the time because you can't ask the world if you're going to the bargaining table. And I'm also going to go through, after the player requests list, I'm also going to talk about the teeth to the movement, about the spending strike. I have some critiques for it, and I have some other options that we could potentially get at Top War to force them to make some of these changes, because a spending strike on its own, the way that it's been defined to me, is not going to work, so I have some critiques about that as well. So the first category we're talking about in the player requests is the price and offers. And the first thing in that category is hero skills are too expensive. To a certain extent, I agree. However, I would rather phrase it differently when I would bring it to top war. Instead of saying make this cheaper, how about telling them to make it accessible through other means? So for example, whenever a hero comes out, you're able to get them with gems. How about also make their exclusive skill available through that method? You know, maybe Top War still makes money by people buying gems, or you can just save up for exclusive skills. Also, if the exclusive skill is still for sale with real money, Top War still has the opportunity to make money, but we have the opportunity to get the, them through gems. That would be very nice, but something else I would like them to do is remove or heavily nerf the bonus that you get once an exclusive skill reaches level 7. All of the heroes for several months now get these incredible bonuses once they reach level 7, and everything else in the game gives you diminishing returns. As you put more money in, or as you put more resources in, in-game resources, you get diminishing returns for what you're putting in. The hero skills seem to be one of the exceptions to that, and I would like to see that nerfed because a level 7 exclusive skill is pretty much unavailable for anybody but some of the biggest spenders. I mean, I believe the cost for getting a level 7 skill is more than the cost of a base skin, so that definitely needs to be reined in. The next thing on the price and offers list is the orange shards are too expensive. Oh, yeah, okay, here's where I'm going to get some haters. I think it should be hard to upgrade your heroes. I think it should be hard to get your perks out. This game does need to last. You do need something to continuously work on. I mean, if it was easy to get it, we'd all have five-star fully perked orange heroes and we'd be bored of the game in five months because there's already not a lot to do in the game. So having heroes to work on is enjoyable. 
and I don't think the cost of orange shards is terribly unreasonable. I would like to see them available in some more participation related events, but I don't think the cost of orange shards is a big enough issue for us to do a spending strike or other means of getting at top war. Next on the list is fake offers like Google 50% discount didn't apply. If you are having issues with like Google or Apple coupon codes not working, you need to go directly to Apple or Google and you need to go through the horrible process of actually getting someone on the phone so you can make a complaint. Because if Google or Apple tells Top War to do something, I promise you Top War will jump immediately because if they don't, they could potentially get kicked off the App Store, especially if enough of these complaints come through. So since the resolution for this issue is going to the App Store providers, this does not need to be on the player request list because Top War is not gonna listen to us as much as they would Google or Apple. Next is price adjustments aren't fair and don't correlate to the country's currency. I do remember just recently that they increased the cost for a lot of stuff for different countries, but not all countries. So that does lead me to believe that the countries aren't necessarily beating, uh, being treated fairly. I don't know if there's any costs behind the, behind the paywall that maybe Top War has to deal with for operating in different countries, so that is something to consider. However, if you want to go to Top War and complain about this, I would recommend making a spreadsheet and showing that, every, showing that the currencies are unfair. So take one currency, for example, let's use the US dollar, and you can buy the 60 gem pack for $1. You know, you can get everybody to screenshot the page where you can buy gems. So $1 gets you 60 gems. Now take screenshots of all the different currencies and figure out, you know, do go to Google and do the transition. You know, $1 is worth this many yen, this many rubles, and see if the prices are close to each other. Give them a margin of error, you know, you know, five, maybe 10%. That seems a bit big. They're not going to be exactly the same just because of, you know, the way the currencies fluctuate, but see if they're at least close enough to each other. But if there is a big enough gap, bring that up. And we can also say, hey, these specific countries are being treated unfairly and you need to change something. So Come at that with uh, come out with that with data. So I think that's a good thing to have on the on this list. But you need data to back it up. The last thing on the price and offers list is VIP rewards don't reflect the amount which is spent per VIP level. I don't think this is a big enough issue to go to Top War to complain about that for a couple of reasons. One, you got what you paid for. Maybe you bought a base skin, decor, gems, whatever it was. You got what you paid for. The VIP rewards are just icing on the cake and I don't think it's a big enough issue to bring to Top War, nor do I think you should be entitled to any kind of free rewards. Like I said, you got what you paid for. This is just extra. The next category we'll be talking about is heroes, and I'll talk about number one and two together because they're basically the same. One is monthly introduction of new heroes decreases the value of the heroes that came before, and two is instead of 12 new heroes a year in addition to the collaboration heroes, just do a set limit where players can get their investment worth out of them before introducing new ones. I am actually fine with Top War releasing 12 heroes a year, but there are some changes they need to make. Now, let Top War release 12 heroes a year. That way, they have the potential of making money. They've got a new hero every month. And instead, focus on getting them to balance the heroes. I would rather have the heroes balanced. Now, there's a couple things to consider. If they're releasing 12 heroes a year, you're not actually getting 12 heroes a year. The vast majority of players only focus on one branch. You're getting four heroes a year. And unless you're the biggest whale or really late in the game, you're only going to work on one branch. So you've only got four heroes a, a year that you have to work on. And I think it's more important to balance those heroes. That way you can get a hero and have them for a year, year and a half, and they're still a relevant hero because they were balanced properly. The problem I have with this you know, approach of releasing so many heroes is every time they release a new hero, or at least most of the time, it's a game-breaking hero or it's significant better than the heroes that are have already been released and that I think is the issue in the game if they balance the heroes I think that would make it more enjoyable for players they're gonna feel like they got their money worth money's worth because they can keep using the same hero and also with a bunch of heroes that are all around the same level it will also make more strategy in the game and I think it would make the game more enjoyable now keep in mind when I say balanced that does not mean that army is gonna beat Navy there's there is the suppression to you know to take into account but I would like you know I would like to have, you know, five, six, or even more options of heroes that I could use in one branch. You know, for example, Air Force. At this moment of time of filming, if you're not using Selena, Aya, and Maximo, your Air Force isn't up to par, because those are really the only three heroes that you should be using. Maybe Rockfield, but really just those three heroes. So I would like to see more heroes come out that were balanced, so it gives more variety to who you're fighting, rather than fight the same Air Force just on different accounts. The last thing in the hero category is allow players to dismantle the old heroes into shards that can be used on new he newer heroes. Some of the old heroes are obsolete. I completely agree. Some of the old heroes are obsolete, but I don't like the idea of this. So 
as I mentioned, I would be more focused on balancing the heroes. If you balance the heroes, this is going to be less of an issue. But also, if you're able to break down all these heroes, you're going to basically instantly five-star the three best heroes. You're going to have them fully perked. And if you're finishing things in the game instantly, I think it's going to ruin a lot of the fun for the game. I mean, half of the fun is the journey getting there. I know some people you know, may disagree with that, but if you activate God mode in a, in a video game, you're going to get bored generally very quickly. So I don't like the idea of this. And also you actually can already to a certain extent do this. If you get your heroes to five stars, all those extra shards, you can trade your perks to that hero and then use those shards on that hero. So that's a way of recycling some of the shards that you're able to get to that. Now, admittedly, it does take you a long time to get to that point, but that is a way of being able to use shards for heroes you don't use anymore. You just have to get them to five star to be able to do that. The next category we have is base skins. Introducing too many skins in too short of a period, such as the same with the heroes decreasing their investment value. I disagree with that second part. The benefit of the base skins is the holding and stock bonuses, they do stack. You know, if you've got a hero you don't use anymore, generally there's not much that they help you with. But with base skins, you have those holding and stock bonuses that add up over time. As far as releasing too many too soon, I, I agree. I would like them to slow down on the base skins. This is one of the times that I would really like Top War to just stop making quite so much money because the get this is something that greatly increases the gap from a you know a heavy spender from to a free to play because those base skin those base skin holding and stock bonuses add up because other than perks there's not a lot of places that you can get all unit attack and all unit hp and the base skins is definitely one that the whales are able to stack up and that really separates the whales based on who has the most base skins i will say Top War has been doing something that I have liked with the base skins that may solve this issue, so definitely put some thought on whether or not this is worth being on the list, but a lot of the base skins they've released lately have had levels. I mean, they even put out an announcement today about another base skin that's going to have levels. So you can get a level 1 for much cheaper. The Piedmont event, they, it basically gave you at least the level 1, and the free-to-play players could at least level that up a couple of times. I mean, of course, to max it out, you did need to pay money, but they do seem to be making the base skins a bit more accessible for the free-to-play players and i like the leveling aspect to the base skin so this might not need to be on the list because top war may be resolving some of our complaints with this already so put some thought on whether or not this needs to be on the list because again you don't want to be you don't want the list to be too long if you go to the bargaining table asking for the world they're just going to say get out of here you're unreasonable the last thing in the base skin category is the prices for some base skins are ridiculous. They don't reflect the holding and stock equipping buffs in comparison to other base skins. I, it's the same issue that has been going on with the heroes as time goes on. They always release something that is like way better than what's already existing and the base skins are no exception to that. So I would like them also to balance the base skins a little bit or at least make some of the more outdated ones uh, cheaper because compared to the new base skins, they're basically the same price, but significantly different buffs. So I, I'd like it if they made the older base skins available for cheaper. But again, this problem might also be in part solved by the fact that they're offering bases that can be leveled now, so you can get bases for cheaper. So again, assess whether or not this needs to be on the player request list. The next category is useless materials, and there's only one thing in it. No events for unused materials, especially after reaching level 80, such as R&D, white and green equipment blueprints, and tech chests. Yes, as, as, a, as a level 80, this stuff piles up very quick. I literally have millions of tech chests and nothing to do with it. And I would really like Top War to do something with that. I mean, give us a game or some sort of, you know, something to do. I mean, Top War gives us a lot to spend on, but they don't give us a lot to actually do. And I know that's a marketing tactic because if, if we have something to do, we're likely to not spend because we're busy doing that thing. But I would like Top War to give us something to actually do, because outside of Eternal Lands, there's not a whole lot to do in this game. I mean, you've got SVS, you've got War of Odinium, but it's just like, you know, when's the next event? They've gotten pretty good with some of the events they've rele released so far, you know, giving us a little bit more to do. But it, it, it feels like less of something to do and more of something to spend on. So I would like Top War to give us something for those useless materials, you know, let us... Let us earn stuff with the stuff we're getting rather than just sit there because I, I think I've got like four or five million tech chests. The next category we have is events and the first thing in there is the drop rate for many items have a rare chance in all events. Yes, the best items in a game are generally going to have a rare drop chance. I, I don't think that's a fair critique and that needs to be taken off the list. Number two is having useless items that can't be used by many players past level 80. We already addressed that in the useless materials category so I won't address it again. And then number three, the removal of rarity of 
removal or rarity of events such as baking event that help players free to play and pay to play to advance I, I agree they need more events that are participation based baking event was one of my favorite events i would like to see it come back and i'd like to see events like it also you know come back or be developed the next thing we have on the list is Odinium. The first thing is repair costs are too high. I'm assuming that's for the Valhalla units. I would disagree. They are the strongest units in the game. They're naturally level 82 units. They have three special abilities that make them stronger, every single one of the Valhalla units. They are the best units in the game. They should be difficult to get. There should be a risk to using them, and that risk is the cost that's associated with, with repairing them or rebuilding them. And also, you already get reduced repair costs during the SVS event for Valhalla units, and you can get reduced repair costs through Scaramanga, Scaramanga's exclusive ability, so this doesn't need to be on the list. Again, they're the strongest unit in the game. They shouldn't be easy to get. I don't want to make the game too easy, because then it's going to get boring. The next thing on the list is no repair facility related specifically for Valhalla units. It should be unlimited. Well, the repair facility for the SVS is unlimited and is specifically for Valhalla units. And again, it makes it cheaper to repair them. As long as you do it in time, you get all of them back. War of Odinium, you have unlimited, unlimited repair, period. So I don't think this is a fair critique. If you have unlimited repair capacity for Valhalla units, then you can defend your base with Valhalla units and never have to worry about losing them. And instead of doing the more expensive way of rebuilding them, you get the cheaper way of repairing them instead. I... I don't think that's a good balance to the game. Again, they're the strongest unit in the game. There needs to be a risk associated to using them. And if this was available during Eternal Lands, it would be so easy for people to rebuild all these units because when you repair units, they're all repairing at the same time rather than when you build units, like say you're using your barracks, you can build five units, but only one of them is going at a time. It, it would be overpowered. You wouldn't be able to stop some people that have a ridiculous amount of Odinium. It would just imbalance the game. There needs to be a cost and a limit to using those units. The last thing for the Odinium category is damage and or degrade ratio for Valhalla's to level 80s do not correlate. I don't understand this critique. I mean, Valhalla units are either degraded or sent to the repair facility under the same circumstances that regular units are, there is some decor out there as well as some um, VIP level bonuses that you're able to unlock that makes it so a unit that should have been degraded instead is sent to the repair facility or just not degraded. Maybe that's the issue. If a Valhalla unit's degraded, it's supposed to turn back into the unit that was sacrificed to make it. So if you sacrifice an 80, it turns into an 80. If you sacrifice an 82, it turns into an 82. I'm not aware of any issues where this function doesn't work like pretty much any other unit. So... I, I don't understand this critique. Okay, we have three categories left. The next thing is the server transfers. Transfer applications are too expensive. I disagree. If it is too easy or too cheap for a player to transfer out of a server, as soon as they face a minor inconvenience or don't get their way, their first instinct is going to be to transfer servers instead of trying to get along and come with come to some sort of agreement with other players. I think if it was too easy or too cheap to transfer, it would degrade the top war community as a whole. People would just say, give me what I want or I'm going to transfer out. That being said, I would like them to move the transfer applications from the VIP store to the item store so everyone has access to them. Um, but I think 1,200 gems and a limit of two per week is still a fair cost. The second thing in the server transfer list is one application in the Alliance store every 15 days is not accept access eh, acceptable. It should be weekly. If they move the transfers from the VIP store to the item store, I would be fine with the one application every 15 days. That still equals about 2.5 applications per week. That's going to get most players out after a fairly reasonable amount of time. Again, I don't want it to be too easy to transfer out because that's just going to degrade the community. So instead of these two things on the list, I would recommend pushing for the transfer applications to be moved from the VIP store to the item store. So it's accessible to everyone. The next category we have is communications. Number one, developers ignore the majority of players' input and suggestions and are selective to which players they do listen to. Yeah, yeah, I've seen some of the video requests I get in the comments on my YouTube or on my Discord channel, and unfortunately, people have stupid ideas. You know, some of the ideas, a, a, a lot of the ideas that people suggest to Top War are just awful ideas or game-breaking ideas. So they can't listen to everybody. They shouldn't listen to everybody. And also... You know, if you have players ask, you know, oh, I want this, oh, I want this, and they're mutually exclusive, like both things can't exist in the game at the same time, of course, that means someone is not getting listened to. So 
that is it's not a fair critique it needs to be taken off the list number two is game and discord moderators have an unprofessional attitude when talking with players <laughs> yeah yeah they do yeah they do that being said game and discord moderators are other players so talk to them with respect they don't really have any say as far as what happens in top war they're just helping top war handle all the complaints because top war only has so many employees so when you're talking to the moderators don't be a jerk to them i understand you're upset about the game we're all upset about the game every other day but don't treat the moderators with disrespect but on that same token i really do wish that top war would institute a way for us to complain about certain moderators that way if they get enough complaints they could be removed from the moderator list because a lot of them a lot of them are jerks themselves and then the last thing in the communications category is many of our questions or inquiries always get deleted by discord mods discord is definitely the top war discord they are way too happy with that delete button i completely agree however it is very difficult for us to have solid ground to stand on when people make valid complaints they do make valid complaints but they make it in an insulting way or they swear a bunch in it and it does actually violate the rules and then the moderators have good ground to delete that when we have a bunch of people doing that it makes it very difficult for us to say hey the mods are deleting stuff unreasonable unreasonably now i agree they are but we need to police ourselves in a fashion before we can go to top war and say hey all your guys are jerks i'm not saying we can't bring it up but something to consider all right, the last category on the list before we get to how we can actually put some teeth into this movement is recruiting cards. Premium recruit vouchers drop ratio for purple hero shards is ridiculous. It should not be that high. I'm going to read the second one too because it ha I have the same critique to it. Elite recruit vouchers drop rate don't reflect the amount of gems needed to purchase items. I disagree. Now, don't get me wrong. I am tired of doing a full draw and I get like almost all purples or actually a couple times all purples and it's just depressing. However, if you add up all the percentages of the heroes that you could potentially get from premium and elite recruit vouchers and so a premium recruit voucher is 150 gems to buy and elite recruit voucher is 400 gems to buy. If you actually look at the numbers of which they drop, you're paying roughly 200 to 300 per shard, which isn't out of line compared to the costs of other shards don't get me wrong I, I understand the frustration of getting jack from a 10 draw from an elite pull but if you stretched it out over time and looked at all your draws you're going to get very close to 200 to 300 gems per shard again the value of a premium recruit ticket is 150 gems where the value of an elite recruit ticket is 400 gems i'm just going off the numbers I understand we get bad draws, but I don't think this is a big enough critique. I've seen it for I've seen it the entire time I've played Top War. Get rid of purple heroes from elite recruit vouchers. If they do that, they're going to like double or triple the cost of the elite recruit vouchers. So these two do not need to be on the list. Just get rid of them. And then the last one, if including components and experience books, then please make them level five and gold experience books. I, I again I I disagree with that. I would like to see more components in the blue recruit vouchers, especially as a level 80, because you get nothing but blue and purple heroes in there. That would be nice, but getting a level five component from these drops, I, I, I think that's an unreasonable ask, and it's not it's not an important enough issue that I think it needs to be on this list. I think you could scrub that as well. Okay, so we've gotten through the list. Those are my opinions on the list. Please don't hate me. I just, you know, thinking about them in a weird way and trying to play devil's advocate a little bit, but the spending strike. Now, I don't know if the movement may have changed their stance on this, but when I was initially told about this, they were planning a seven-day spending strike. This will not work. And the reason is, if you get players to not spend for seven days, let's just, let's just assume you could get everybody on the same page and get nobody to spend for seven days. On the eighth day, they're going to take all the money that they would have spent for those seven days, and they're going to spend it on the eighth day or the few days following, which means Top War isn't actually going to see a significant drop in their income if you want a spending strike to work it is more important to get players to tone back their spending you don't have to completely stop but tone it back and also when packs come out that people are usually excited about talk about all the negatives like be negative about all the packs that come out and and it would discourage people from buying those packs like oh that came out and it's only giving you this well that's not worth it because this is way better or this or that or find ways to discourage people from from buying the packs. so if everybody you know actively discourages people from paying for things as well as 
lowering their own spending, Top War should see a, a dent in their, in their income, and then maybe that will get their attention. But a simple seven-day spending strike it's, it's not going to work. You need to you need to think long term. You need to hold the pressure for a long time. This can't be a short one and done fix. It's not going to work like that. This is a battle. Also, something to consider is you will not. I mean, it would be nice if you could, but you will not get everybody on the same page. If you get people to stop spending or even tone back their spending, there are some tyrants in the game that are going to see that as their opportunity to take control of the server. So that is something to consider as well. But I think actively discouraging everybody, especially in new servers, which means you're going to have to hang out in the new servers and discourage them. Oh, that pack is terrible. Don't buy that. Don't buy that. It, discouraging people to buy those packs. And, you know, over time, hopefully Top War would see a drop in their income and then maybe they would take these player demands more seriously. But I do have a couple of other ideas that you could potentially use against Top War. One thing you could do is, of course, the one star campaign against Top War. However, you should not send everybody to give a one star review all at the same time. This has happened many times with many other businesses before and Google, Apple, whatever the rating service is, has been able to remove those reviews during you know certain time periods. Instead, you need to coordinate your movement to give one star reviews to do it over a long period of time. Unfortunately, this does result in less people participating because it, it requires them to take action months away from now but it's something that would be more effective than having a bunch of dislikes all at one time or a bunch of one-star reviews all at one time and then just to have Google remove those. It would temporarily lower them on the top charts, so they potentially could lose out on some players through that way, so less players would be playing, so I'm not saying it's completely ineffective, but long-term, you need people doing it over time. So something you could do, I had recommended to one of the guys that you could base it off your birthday, so take your birth month, you know, March, and then just pick a random day in March and, you know, do a one star review. This would spread out the this would spread out the negative reviews over an entire year. It'd be much more difficult for people to get rid of. My only concern is could could Google or Apple track your birthday and get rid of dis, get rid of one star reviews like that? So the solution I came up with, I just thought about this a little while ago, based off your mother's birthday or just somebody's birthday, pick some somebody's birthday that's not your own and on their birthday or at least in their birth month go ahead and write the negative review it'll be much harder for top war to get rid of those neg negative reviews because they can't say hey google all these reviews happened in a one week period can you get rid of all of these because it was obviously a you know a campaign against us also when you write your one star review you actually have to write a review you need to do a good long review because if it's just one star maybe they can get rid of it based on look at all these one star reviews that didn't say anything you actually have to say why don't you like top war and it would be good to write a paragraph or so don't just write you know like Oh, this is pay. This is pay to win. That it's not enough. You need to go into detail and say why you don't like it. Actually, put something behind it, and it's it's your opportunity to say, "Hey, top war. This is all the things I don't like." And if they get enough people saying the same thing, maybe that's something else that could potentially get them to change what they're doing. Now, I do have a couple more things that we could do against top war, but these are kind of scorched earth tactics, and I will say these are not my favorite things, and these should be held off until the bitter end. And that would be going to new servers and, well, making life difficult for the new players. If you know how to play, you know how to level up faster than them. Um, you know, go in there and talk about, you know, talk negatively about Top War. You can say, oh, yeah, Top War does this, this, and this. Once you reach this level, there's nothing to do. You know, once you reach level 80, you're just bored. They don't let you do anything with your stuff. They don't care about the old players. You know, talk negatively about Top War in a careful way because i mean most players are going to be like well if you hate top war why are you here talking about it so you have to be careful about how you do it but also if you make players life difficult you know tacking tiles you know getting rid of their farms and stuff like that and just make the game unpleasant for them that could run off new players and then top war would see a dent in their pocketbook as a result of that not my favorite thing to do but it is something that's an option i mean something else that could be done is you know just scorched earth earth on the server you just you know turn your server into a tyrant server and just make life difficult for everyone where they either transfer out or quit playing because they're just tired of it i mean if you make top war an unpleasant place to be top war will see a decrease in sales they'll see a decrease in downloads but again that's something that really needs to wait until we've seen what top war is going to do with this list of demands something you could do that takes advantage of those scorched earth tactics but doesn't necessarily ruin top war in the app store i noticed that it's i forget the name that they're under it's river games something but 
they have one other app. It's basically Top War, but all females with boobs. It's called Z Girls, I think. It's basically it's just Top War with a different skin on it. You can go there and ruin that game, and then Top War will see that you know. Oh, okay, so we're ruining the game. I mean, at least if you ruin Z Girls, you're not ruining Top War specifically. So then you don't have to worry about your game crashing. But if you you know start damaging their pocketbook in in Z Girls, which is the same game as Top War, so they'd have to make the same changes. That's another way that we could get change. It's a new game, so they don't make a ton of money from it. But you know, kind of sabotaging their new project, it's something that might influence them to change the way they're doing things. Just keep in mind, if you do too much damage to Top War and it's no longer worth their money to have this game up and running, they'll just shut it off and go somewhere else. So keep that in mind. Don't take it too far. You know, slowly kind of edge up the pressure to see where things go. But those are really all the ideas I have about getting against Top War. Of course, if they're doing anything that's against like Google or Apple Terms of Service, if they're doing anything unscrupulous, make sure you put in some complaints with them because they'll listen to Google or Apple a lot more than they would listen to us. But let me know what you guys think about some of the critiques I've made. If you have critiques of your own, definitely bring those up. I'm sure the leaders of this movement will be going through my comments to see if they see anything that, you know, catches their eye. I mean, you know, obviously what I say isn't the be all end all. I'm just putting in my opinion. I think it's a good idea to attack each other's ideas. We want to put these ideas through the ringer, beat them up, make sure they're strong. If they're weak ideas, they need to be taken off the table because if you take an idea to top war and they can basically just say, oh, that's going to break the game and just easily dismiss it. That's not a good idea to bring to them. We need to bring good, solid ideas. They cannot easily dismiss so we can get our way. So let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Please don't forget to drop a like while you're down there. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is probably the longest video I've ever put out, but I definitely think it's a good subject to talk about. But anyway, as always, have a fantastic day. I'm pretty sure it was sunny when I started. <laughs>